In just a moment, we will bring you another wonderful adventure story told by your delightful friend, Uncle Gruesome. I know you've been waiting for Uncle Gruesome to appear, and he is in just a moment. So, clasp hands, boys and girls, for another tale by Uncle Gruesome. Hello, kiddies. This is your Uncle Gruesome with his little session of storytelling. Don't you just love Grimm's fairy tales? <laughs> Uncle Gruesome thinks they're very charming. Stories like Sleeping Beauty and how she was poisoned by the Queen. Isn't that delightful? Little Red Riding Hood, how her grandmother was gobbled up Oh, Groton. <laughs> Excuse me while I replace a fang. <laughs> there, that's much better, isn't it? And the other. Oh, there. Now, Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother was gobbled up by this wolf who had a dining club card. And I'm sure most of you will remember the hot little chapter in Hansel and Gretel where they were shoved into the oil burner by the old witch. Hmm? I just love children's fairy tales, don't you? <laughs> of course. Now, today I'm going to tell all you delicious little children the story of Snow White. <laughs> the gentleman who has the position here, a floor manager, seems to think this is rather humorous. In fact, we had quite a little tiff yesterday when Uncle Gruesome came to the studio to look over the lights. But Uncle Gruesome had some spare time last night. Made this charming little doll. It does bear a remarkable resemblance, doesn't it? There he goes, walking up and down again while Uncle Gruesome is talking. Well, now... Let's see. There now, that didn't take long, did it? <laughs> well, I must hurry along with my story now because my little sister, Sumac, is going to pick me up on her 1956 broom. Quite a vehicle. Hydromatic clutch, power straws, and some really wonderful backup lights. And if I don't take the ride today, I'll never get a chance, because little Sumac belongs to a broom fool. And it's her turn this week to fly the witches to work. We have quite a happy little home, Sumac and I, nothing ostentatious, rather simple little split-level mausoleum, and uh, a picture window crypt. There's a subway practically at the door to the nearest cemetery, so you can see how convenient it is. Tonight we're having some friends in for Canasta. The wolf man and Dracula will be partners, and I'm going to team up with a creature from the Black Lagoon. Should be fun, don't you think? <laughs> Little Sumac is going to make the sandwiches. I don't think I'd better tell you what's in them, because so many of the children of this generation are so queasy. However, they'll all be done in a delightful mixture using a cream cheese base all washed down with some room temperature poison hemlock. I've been looking forward to it all day. <laughs> now let's get on with the story of Snow White. Excuse me, well, I must see if my broth is done yet. Frankenstein has been feeling poorly all week, and I... Oh, that looks so good, doesn't it? I did promise to drop in and bring him a little something. Has a bit to cook yet. Well, one day, the wicked queen was sitting in her dressing room, casually sticking some pins into a little wax effigy she'd made of a former friend, just killing time when she happened to look at her old album of her former college days. The queen had been quite a soccer player at dear old Mausoleum University, being particularly adapted to the game with her webbed feet. <laughs> as she had been voted the most hideous girl of her class. 
Uh, she'd always been a little self-conscious about this and had had several beauticians beheaded until she found one who transformed her into a thing of loveliness. She looked up into the mirror on the wall, which was a, a lovely thing with half the silvering gone, and the frame made of black ebony cut from the plank of a Chinese pirate ship. And she said as she ran her long yellow fingers through her exquisitely coiffured green hair, mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? And the mirror spoke and said, my dear queen, back away for I have a hunch that again you've been eating some garlic for lunch. <laughs> well, the queen smiled grimly at the mirror's frankness with her three even rows of ochre teeth reflecting the candlelight on the walls and casually picking up the postman whom she had had petrified by casting a spell on him for having read her postcards, she said to the mirror, how would you like me to make you into about 40 compacts? Get it? <laughs> the mirror hastily got to the business at hand, coughed once, which fogged the surface a little, and said, Snow White is prettier from the spring to the fall, mostly because she's 11 feet tall. <laughs> so said the queen, <laughs> absently kicking the leg out from under a stork who had been taking a nap. Snow White again. Now, just because she's 11 feet tall, and the queen stretched her own neck to make herself taller, which was not too difficult, inasmuch as her head was removable. Well, there's only one thing to do, said the queen. I must call the captain of the torture room. So she lighted the wicks and the mouths of several servants which she had had dipped in wax. <laughs> so the wicked queen could see well enough to go to her files. And quickly she found the captain of her torture room and called him on the crystal ball intercom system made by a cousin who was a mind reader. In a very few seconds, the captain popped up through the trap door feet first. The queen turned to him and said, Irving Schwarzkopf, that was the captain's name, as captain of my torture room, I have a little job for you. Okay, queen, said Irving, slipping a hot red pepper to the queen's parakeet on the side, for Irving loves his little fun. What shall it be? And the queen said, tomorrow, Irving, when you're out on your coffee break, drop up to Snow White's room and shoot a poison dart or something at her if you have time. All right, Queen, said Irving, quickly taking the little plastic cup of water out of the parakeet's cage. I'll do that for you tomorrow at ten. Sharp. Hear me, the time is flown. I must see if my broth is done. Frankenstein is expecting me. Simply delicious. Ah. 